light of the universe is from God. And the light of God lived and dwelt among us in human form in Jesus and then was taken up into heaven to continue to shine upon our lives and through our hearts. That Lord, that sovereign one be with you. Land is sacred and holy. Our relationship with each other on this land is sacred and holy. It calls for respect and appreciation, and so we offer our appreciation, our thanksgiving, and our respect that we can gather in this place and on this land as a result of the welcome that comes through Upper Canada Treaties Number 27 and Number 45 and a half, which allow for peaceful and respectful living on this land. Thanks to the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabek, the neutral peoples, and the Odawa and Ojibwe tribes of the Saugeen who have lived here for thousands of years. We acknowledge that we are connected with the people who have lived here for all those years because of the treaties. And because we are treaty people, we must honor the responsibilities that come with such agreements. May we be a people who remember this with gratitude and respect. Just a few things to note by way of announcement. I'll be on study leave uh, after today until uh, following Monday. So if there are emergent pastoral needs during that time, please contact Reverend Kathy Larmond at Clinton United Church. The information is in the bulletin today. Next Sunday, special service brought to you through our outreach team on right relations and reconciliation. Enjoy our guest speaker, Reverend Rodney Smith Merkley, and there will also be a time for some conversation and a video presentation after worship next Sunday. If you're interested in a time of retreat and uh, refueling of your spirit, I'm offering that on Friday, August 25th, and Saturday, August 26th. It's an in-house retreat. We come here Friday night, go home, come back Saturday around the theme of spiritual practices and find ones that may work well for you, but they'll be, you'll be exposed to several opportunities uh, for nurturing your spirit during that time. There is lemonade after church today, after worship today, probably in the hall rather than outside because I'm not sure about the weather. But thanks to our stewardship and finance team for providing lemonade, and it's going to continue the rest of this month. I also am aware that there is a downtown revitalization group committee being organized through the uh, town uh, uh, governance, governing body municipal authorities, and they're looking for a citizen to represent uh, the people on that group. I think there's still time to apply, but it might be wonderful if someone from this congregation, since we're part of that downtown area, uh, might have an ear to the ground as that initiative moves forward. So think about that, and I think you go on the you know, municipal website and you can find out where to apply if you want to be that person on that group. Our opening hymn, number 226, For the Beauty of the Earth.
also want to welcome and thank our guest soloist today, uh, Jeff Hearn, uh, bass soloist. He's singing bass, not playing bass. Thank you. Join in our call to worship. We come to draw near to God, to praise, to pray. We come as God's beloved children. Our gathering song in more voices, number two, Come All You People. Even move a little bit, you can do that, but that's okay. We're going to sing it twice. join in prayer. God, our maker, in universal space, you love us dearly and have nurtured us since the beginning. The abundance that surrounds us is astonishing. and All we can do is marvel. With joy-filled hearts, let us proclaim the good news that you are among us. Dance with us as we embrace one another with loving hearts and with thanksgiving. Travel with us as we share your promised signs of grace and peace and hope. Pray with us as we come together as followers of Jesus' way to offer you our worship this day. Amen. And in a way that seems safe and comfortable for you, wiggling fingers, peace signs, bowing, namaste, share the peace of Christ, road to row, pew to pew, balcony to floor, front to back, and whatever way you feel comfortable, saying the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Peace of Christ. Shout and go round the walls of Zion, the walls of Zion. Come, fathers and mothers, come, sisters and brothers, come join us in singing the praises of Zion. and brothers come join us in singing the praises of Zion oh fathers don't you feel determined to meet within the walls of Zion we'll shout and go round 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 the walls of Zion the walls of Zion the walls of Zion
This morning's scripture is taken from Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 29, concerning self-deception. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you who behave lawlessly. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these words, the crowds were astounded at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribe. And from the book of Genesis, part of an old, old story that has all the marks of legend upon it and the signs of myth in the good sense of that word. Now, these are the descendants of Noah. Noah was a righteous person, blameless in his generation. And Noah traveled through life with God. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Now, the earth had become corrupt and in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence, and God saw that the earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to do away with all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And I am going to destroy them along with the earth. Now you, you make for yourself an ark. And let there be rooms in it. And and. Cover it inside and out with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. Its length shall be 100 cubits. Its width shall be 50 cubits. And its height shall be 30 cubits. You shall build a roof upon it, a cubit above everything else. And there will be a door that you'll make into its side. And a lower deck, a second deck, and a third deck. As for me, I am going to release a flood of waters upon the earth so that everything under heaven in which there is the breath of life shall perish. Everything, everyone on earth will die. But I will make a covenant with you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives. You shall all go into the ark. And of every living thing that there is upon the earth, take two of every kind with you to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of all the birds according to their kinds and all the animals according to their kind and of every creeping thing that creeps upon the ground according to its kind, take two of every one of them with you into the ark to keep them alive. And of every kind of food which is eaten. Take some of that, store it up, and it shall serve you and them as food. And Noah did just that. Noah did everything that God had commanded him to do. And Noah and his family and all those animals rode out the storm, survived the flood. 
And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. And God said, Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives, and bring with you every living thing that is with you, the birds and the animals and everything that creeps upon the ground, that they may abound upon the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. So, Noah came out along with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. And every living thing also came out of the ark. The birds, everything that creeps on the ground and the animals went out of the ark by families. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we might see more of your vision for creation. Open our minds that we might comprehend and catch sight of your hope. Open our hearts that we might deeply love with a sense of purpose and open our spirits that we might soar towards your possibilities. God took great delight in fashioning creation, and God took great joy and risk in creating human beings to help work out that creation's evolution. A whole new world. And it will take something like Aladdin's appreciation of wonder and sense of adventure and courageous spirit and faith to help that happen. God, humanity, and creation are interconnected, bonded together for life, headed for eternal life and consummation, wholeness, perfected harmony, and bliss. In those early primordial times, it took only a couple of eons for everything to fall apart. When God saw how wicked the people on earth had become and how evil were their thoughts, God regretted ever having made them and put them on earth. God was so sad and upset that, well, as Bill Cosby retold it when he was in better repute, God found one righteous family and told its patriarch, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And when God explained what an ark was, Noah asked, why? And God replied, how long can you tread water? <laughs> so... Noah and his family built an ark and loaded it with male and female pairs of every living species of creature and boarded it and floated out the great outpouring of floodwaters for 40 days and 40 nights, however long that was at that time. And how sad it was that everyone else and many of the other creatures on earth at that time did not survive. And after about 200 or so days, the flood was over. When Noah was 601 years old, on the first day of the first month, the water was gone. Different story, same idea. Noah removed the covering of the ark, looked around and saw that the ground was getting dry. And by the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. God said, Noah, all of you get out of the ark, and let all the creatures out too. And then get busy and be productive and reproduce. And let's start this whole project over again, okay? Okay. And Noah built an altar to God to offer heartfelt thanks. And God spread a gorgeous rainbow in the sky, promising never to do such a terrible thing again. A whole new world with new horizons to pursue. It's a legendary tale, far more than ancient prehistory. 
though some archaeologists still look for that ark and some think they may have found it, it's less verifiable fact than it is formative myth, a pattern that reappears throughout the Bible. For whenever there is a breakdown in any of those primary relationships between God, humanity, and creation, trouble happens, and disaster can often result. The biblical cold word is sin, but I prefer terms like waywardness, failing, ungodliness. God doesn't cause breakdowns in our relationships with God, but we do. God doesn't cause breakdowns in our relationships with other human beings, but we do. God doesn't cause breakdowns in our relationships with creation, but we do. How in the world are we going to help ourselves in creation find fulfillment if time and time again we keep on messing it up? Well, good news. God is patient. God is good and merciful and gracious. And God refuses to give up on us. God came in person in Jesus and died on a cross to emphasize that. So take that to heart. You and I and everyone else can get on board again and help God with that grand evolutionary project. The Bible calls that repentance. Another way of saying that is reverse course. Give waywardness up and get it right. We have the potential within to turn our life direction and bad decisions around God being our helper transformation is possible. It also helps if we recognize and admit, and admit that we've had some part in making a mess. But God will not foreclose the mortgage on creation. We've had a good run at it, and it's getting precarious. Industrial and human pollution, excess garbage and overconsumption, global warming, the cumulative damage of the last century alone is frightening. Add to that ongoing interhuman strife, violence, war, prejudice, injustice, avarice, envy. Our world is still a messy place. And the recent COVID-19 pandemic exacerbated that. But it may have been a crisis that creates time and room for renewal and fresh opportunities as well. A refrain from a bare naked lady song comes to mind. It's the end of the world as we know it, or as we knew it. But maybe that's a good thing. God's Spirit is very busy brooding over our present chaos and creating hope, vital hope. There's growing impetus to get going green, for working to restore creation. There will be increased use of solar panels, wind turbines, tidal power, electronic vehicles, and less dependence on fossil fuels. There will be a marked decrease in the use of toxins. Beyond unleaded gasoline and eliminating CFCs, we see more filtering into micropollutants. Use of pesticides and chemical sprays will be curtailed by more organic treatments. The makers of Raid Bug Killer also advocate switching to natural alternatives like garlic. Implementing the constraints of the National Clean Water Act will continue to eliminate pathogens and protect aquifers, watersheds, water systems. We'll see less and less use of plastics and a rise in the use of personal water bottles. Reduce, reuse, recycle will become more frequently practiced. Watch for recycling kiosks with scanners that plug into a laptop or a cell phone or an iPad. You can buy an annual membership to use a kiosk and to deposit your recyclable goods. And whatever you deposit earns you points that gets converted into rewards in the form of coupons and discounts at local businesses, restaurants, or entertainment centers. As a user, you can go to the host website to track your own sustainable progress. Look for more closed-loop economies where all waste becomes material for some other product. In our post-COVID-19 world, Earth may actually come to breathe again, and the threat of global warming will be edged out by the influx of global refreshing. We've also been making more effective use of communication and information technologies this future that has been lingering outside our doors has come to take up permanent residence. 
God's Spirit is nudging and inviting us to embrace it as a friend with prudence and care. Businesses with more employees now working more frequently from home may in fact be flourishing more than before the pandemic hit us. Less traffic on the highways is a blessing. Commuter services may be suffering some at present. Perhaps they were overdue for rethinking. Working from home offers some challenges as well as opportunities for couples and families to balance the reality of having more time together. Having flexible work hours, more time available for play, conversation more than two minutes a week, personal interests, more online education. It's not necessarily better, but it's going to be there. More online shopping and online meetings of committees and small groups, online exercise classes. All are the outcome of the pandemic days, and they're here to stay. Prudence and care can also bring heightened awareness that we need to pay attention to taking break times from living more and more online, that we need to be sure that those who have no internet connection are not forgotten and left uninformed and more socially isolated, and we need to create ways for small businesses to still thrive if retail customer traffic becomes reduced and that times for person-to-person encounters really still matter. And churches are a great place where that can yet happen. The global health care called us to place high value on personal and communal health. We've been invited to review our own lifestyles, hygiene, diet, exercise, mindset, spirit, merit, wholesome attention, and healthful practice. Many of our long-term health care facilities will need to make significant improvements. Health care systems in general throughout the world may need more available practitioners in the future so they don't get overloaded. Congested neighborhoods, homeless shelters, refugee camps, more homeless people are not conducive to healthful community. And so affordable and creative housing options are a must. Unfortunately, It seems that being forced into social distancing and isolation assisted in turning a spotlight on the inhumanities of racism and violence and abuse. But hopefully, hopefully, seeing them in some of their ugliest and more horrid moments has also created a counter-movement, keen on developing not only awareness, but also initiatives and efforts to form respectful and supportive human interrelationships. Healthy community is also about social as well as physical and psychological well-being. Online banking, more e-transfers, more tap and go will be prevalent practices, part and parcel of building a new and different global economy. The best practices in respected and thriving corporations, large and small companies and organizations and institutions will be known by buzzwords like regenerative leadership, integrated worldview, and global ethics. Watching and participating in sports and entertainment events will be different for a while. Our aching need to be able to hug others and shake hands again is slowly becoming safer. The anti-COVID vaccine seemed to be effective for the most part so far. So helping fashion this new world is going to take time and persistence and care and patience. But let us count on God to guide our hands, our steps, our hearts, and our spirits. Restoring creation, reaching out with compassion, using the gifts of human ingenuity wisely, taking wholesome care of ourselves, restoring and creating right relations. These are all ways we could activate those possibilities, part of helping God help creation find wholeness and fulfillment. They are possible. They are doable. We can break from old patterns and bad habits and act differently. We can more and more live and breathe faith and love and hope, dance with the Spirit, hike along with Jesus the Christ, travel and work along with God, Unbelievable sights, indescribable feelings, 
soaring, tumbling, revealing through an endless diamond sky, a whole new world, that's where we'll be, a thrilling chase, a wondrous place for you and me, and for everyone else, for everything else, for all creation, and for God who is both with us and ahead of us. Thanks, honor, glory, and praise ever be to such a God who shares that adventure with us. Our hymn is number 307 in Voices United, Touch the Earth Lightly. Thank you for all the ministry and outreach efforts of your spirits and hearts and lives in which you already participate in and through this church and in your daily lives. Thank you for all those offerings that help make the world a safer, healthier, more wholesome place and help creation heal. Let's receive our offerings for this day.
holy God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, accept these offerings of your people, forbid that we should bring our gifts and yet withhold ourselves. Grant that with the tribute of our hands we may also bring the consecration and dedication of our hearts and lives. To you be glory and thanksgiving forever. Amen. As we move into prayer, I'm not sure I told Doug about this, I'm not sure it's in the bulletin. So there's a refrain that after I say the words, and so we sing, we will sing, I will go, God, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Don't need a company. Doug will be fine a cappella. Let's pray. Let's pray. Holy One. Today, we continue to sing of your intention for all creation. As we sing our songs and pray our prayers, we ask you to guide us and empower us by your Spirit. That's because when you guide us, we feel encouraged to go. And so we sing. I will go, God, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. God of ministry and outreach, help us discern how you are calling us today and to what, not only as individuals but also as a community of faith. Continue to equip us for ministry and outreach, even in these yet uncertain, still strange and quite different times. Journey with us and lead us on as we chart new pathways, new pathways in life in the ebb tide of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we sing. I will go, God, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. God of the world and all creation, we pray not only for ourselves, but for this world and all who dwell therein. Offer peace in places of war and violence, and may we be part of that hope. Offer comfort to those who are ill or lonely, or bereaved, or troubled, and may we be agents of your compassion. Offer love to all the people of the world and inspire them to take better care of creation and build more bridges of respect for one another instead of barriers and barbs or prejudice and hate. As we follow Jesus, may our ministry and outreach initiatives become clear, and wherever you send us and lead us, we will follow, and so we sing. I will go, God, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. We will go as agents of your coming realm, your future vision for creation for which Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father and Mother who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In number 713, I see a new heaven. I see a new earth. <laughs>
God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and to worship you now and always. Amen. Thank you.